Hello, uh, my name is Heather Barnes and I am the nurse manager here for Green Staff. I am also a registered nurse uh, living in Austin, Texas, actually North Austin. Um, I have been a nurse since 2015 and my specialty is labor and delivery. Uh, my role with Green Staff Medical is the nurse manager, so I am sort of the clinical liaison between our office staff and our clinical uh, staff, clinical nurses. Anything that has to do with the clinical aspect is something that I take care of. Okay, well, um, a few things. After working bedside as a staff nurse when uh, my family lived in Houston uh, at my hospital that I loved, we ended up moving. So we moved to Austin about mm, three years ago, and I found that not only the pay for bedside nursing in Austin was significantly less than what I was used to, my daughter um, is moving into the teenage years, and I felt like I really needed to be closer at home with her. So uh, working from home, but still having the ability to be in the nursing field and to work with the nurses in a role of support and help was very appealing to me because labor and delivery nursing is a lot of support and help during the laboring process. So it was um it was a good transition for me to still be able to to help in the ways that I am good at helping. Um, mostly it is to help mediate between any facility issues that they might be having with the nurse or the nurse is having with the facility. Also, any clinical concerns or questions that one of our nurses may have while they're on the job, they can always reach out for help um, from me. My favorite part of the job is just lending a listening ear. Um, I tell all of the nurses that I talk to, keep my number. This is my number. This is who I am. If you're having a hard shift and you literally just need to call me and cry or scream or yell or whatever, just to be able to have somebody that understands and knows what you're going through, because I've gone through it before, call me, do all those things. I'm just a listening ear. Sometimes it just helps to get it out there off of your chest. Um, I also follow up with all of our terminations and just kind of figure out what happened between the facility, the nurse, um, what was going on in that particular instance. Um, some of the more challenging facilities, we do have a few here that are a little harder to work with. So a lot of times I will speak with the nurses if they're interested in going to those facilities and just give them a more transparent picture of what they would be walking into possibly. And that way they can make a very educated decision on whether they want to work with that facility or whether they want to go back to their recruiter and find something that might be a better fit. The biggest challenge that I have um, is when facilities are not standing up for the travel nurses, they are not treating them well. Um, some situations I would even consider abusive. And that's that's a hard situation for me because we need to continue fostering a relationship with our facilities so that we can provide jobs to our nurses. But in those situations where I really feel like they're not being fair to our travel nurses, it's a tricky balance. Um, and often I don't have the power, green staff doesn't have the power to necessarily change the culture. We can notify the facility or the unit that these things are happening, but ultimately it's up to the facility to make those changes. Um, so again, to 
to pre-educate the nurses that might be interested in going there of what they might face so that they have all the facts and they know what they're walking into. And if they're already there, just again, to be that listening ear and to support them and, you know, remind them you've only got so many more days on your contract and I believe you can do it or you're doing the right thing, even though you're not really being treated fairly, just showing that support to them. Um, again, we use um, learning modules uh, called Relias, and so we use a lot of those to ensure that the nurses that we are sending to the facilities are qualified, that they're up to date, and they know exactly what they're doing. And then a lot of it is just through conversation with nurses as well to make sure that when you speak to somebody, you can tell whether they they know what they're doing or whether they're This one, again, can sometimes be tricky, particularly in those facilities that are not so um, travel friendly. Um, so basically, it's just reminding our nurses to go in, be professional, be kind, be helpful in everything that you do. If all of those actions are not reciprocated, um, trying not to take it personally trying not to fix a broken culture in a hospital, but keeping yourself safe, keeping your patients safe, doing your job to the best of your ability. Um, and again, reaching out if it becomes too much so that you can speak about it, going up the chain of command at your hospital, um, those sort of things. Um, like most people, websites, various websites, looking up various information. Obviously, if there's something that's going on with a particular nurse or candidate, if I'm not familiar with it, you know, going on to the World Wide Web and, you know, finding the information for them so that I can respond back to them. Um, a lot of it comes from, again, just those conversations that I'm having with the nurses and what they're experiencing out there. Um, through our own manager meetings within the company when different things with licensing come up, um, those sorts of things. Uh, so often I receive uh, phone calls from nurses who have been terminated and in the process of speaking to them, and this is not all hospitals, but there are a few facilities that um, for various reasons, they'll terminate a nurse and they will say it's because of X, Y, Z. But when you speak with the nurse and you hear everything that they did and went through, the pieces don't necessarily match up. And so sometimes I feel like our nurses get terminated because of budgeting or various things, but that's not how it's reported. It's reported that the nurse, you know, made this mistake or did this incorrectly, which may or may not necessarily be the truth. And um, I had a fairly new traveler, one of her first travel assignments that this happened to her. And, you know, I talked to her and she explained what she did and Clearly, she had done everything correctly, and it was just one of those weird situations, but she was just devastated that someone thought or said that she had done these things um, and making her look like she didn't care or wasn't a good nurse. And um, I take it to heart because nurses don't do this because of the money. They do it because it's a calling and they care for people and they want to help people and make things better. And so, um, you know, she was so devastated and just crying and crying and crying and just letting her get that off her chest and reassuring her that after listening to her, I believed that she is a good nurse and that she did what she was supposed to and to try not to get bogged down by this one instance. But, you know, have a cup of hot cocoa, go take a warm bubble bath. I believe in you. After hearing your story, I believe that you did the right thing. So, you know, let's cry it out. Let's get it out and move on and get a better assignment. And just the, just that I believe in, in the nurse.
Um, so I think I mentioned before for our nurses, um, if there are any clinical skills or things of that nature that they feel like they need to brush up on or they want to learn about. Again, we've got these great web-based Relias modules that they can go on and just do learning. They can do testing through it. So um, that is, that's great for them to be able to log in and use um, at any time. And as far as our recruiters, because I am kind of in the middle of the clinical and the recruiters, our recruiters don't always know the ins and outs of, of all of the healthcare lingo or issues. And so just being able to go back and explain in more detail some of those more clinical things that they might not be familiar with so that they can continue to grow and learn and build a stronger relationship with um, their clients. Um, I mean, I personally measure them through the phone calls that I make. And if I have listened to someone who was upset or about a situation, even if I wasn't able to solve the actual situation because it's a facility concern, um, just when that nurse says, thank you so much for listening, or I really appreciate you listening or trying to help, um, I mean, that is my measurement of success their um, in their appreciation and their thankfulness and then if I can resolve any sort of facility issue with them um, I mean that's the best um, similar to um, an earlier question it kind of always goes back to communication with the key on listening just listening to the nurses, what they're going through, um, having empathy for what they're dealing with. It's a very hard job at times um, on many levels. And so being the listening ear, the, the empathetic ear, um, having integrity, because again, it's that balance between fostering relationships with the facilities and the hospitals, but sometimes they're not so nice to our nurses. So having the integrity to get back to the facility and say, hey, this is going on and we need to stand up for our nurses. Um, that's really important. And then just organiza organizational skills, uh, keeping everything neat and tidy and being able to follow up with various situations and nurses. Thank you.